Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we are continuing the Royal Rumble campaign. I'm trying to beat the game on the hardest difficulty and by hardest difficulty I actually mean legendary Iron Man, double enemy squad size, yellow alert and around 100 mods that make our life a living hell. Time for Operation Bone Mother which is the destruction of a raider base and we got already four people on the ground. Now it is time to fortify our forces by more operatives. Good, for this mission we are going to take uh, the B team, the original B team and Placable Ataxia is uh, with us. The rest of the B team is already there. Russ makes its uh, his return. Vendieu is going to be the sniper. I put uh, Wilson in here for good measure because on those like multi squad missions where we do have 10 uh, 10 operatives it's always good to have squad side and with the turret and him that'll be good and we got squatty bastard with us for the first time i figured this would be as good of a time as any to start his career and maybe get a couple of kills and with that hopefully a rank uh, which uh, would get him at least to corporal uh, a solid start for his career Okay, so we landed. We got, as always, a 10-man team. And I mentioned it a couple of times. I am not a big fan of 10-man uh, squads. It just makes everything so slow. So this specific mission might be testing my personal limits of the PC. Because it is 50 plus enemies, 10 uh, operatives on our side, and there will be a lot of things that are happening at the same time. Let's see how well that goes. Whatever you say. Inappropriate Murphy just tries to move up. The more, eni oof, the more enemies we kill, the easier the load on the PC hopefully is becoming. Well, look at that. Put our finger right into the hornet's nest. Okay, come on. Every Any day now. So we got 6 plus 6 plus 6. That's 18 right there. That's a new one for me, even. Uh, moving into 18 enemies. We had that, I think, once with the Chrysalids. But luckily, it's the Bandit faction. So now I do understand what the Bandit's true advantage is. Power and numbers is really what they're trying to do. And I'm not even sure if a PC would be able to handle that much. Well, some PCs would be able to handle it better, but... I think the combination of mods really is a bit too much for the engine of XCOM 2. Alright, come on. Any day now. I promise you guys it's going to become better once uh, the once half of the map is cleared. Let me pause that and fast forward until my PC decides to animate everything. Okay, finally. So after a while of debating, my PC decided, you know what? That's actually a good idea to animate everything. And here we are. All right, moving forward with Zirkim. Mission 
Oh, I can see something good coming out of this. Anders moves up. <laughs> Alright, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. 5 to 8. Well, that is not a 100% kill. Might as well give it a try. Apparently that is a 100% kill. And here we go with face off. He's even levitating in the air like he's otherworldly at this point. No longer confined by the measly laws of physics. It's literally bullet timing that. And destroying the entire bandits. Well, it shows you why you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. And why the headshot mechanic of the loss have not been used for normal enemies. Cool. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? We, by the way, do have another uh, face off, which I'm going to save for a rainy day. You never know. You never know when the next uh, guy is going to show up. Yeah, let's try to kill the ones back there. Wilson the second moves up. Gets a kill and Let's put a turret down. Please don't tell me that the turret is triggering more. Oh, that's there. A little bit more advanced team. I see, I see how it is. Okay, before we deal with them, do a little test here, shall we? Roby moves up. Gotta be careful now to not fall into that trap of continuously pulling more and more and more enemies. I know there was another pack just around the corner. Yeah. What's the flag? Well, apparently it is not just one other pack around the corner. Apparently it's quite a few enemies. No, it's not going to be okay, but it's the point in the campaign where you stop caring about these little, these little things. Because you always have Russ that can move up and just solve most of that. We do have an auto loader, right? It's all good. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe we need more ammunition. Okay, okay. 
They were certainly not kidding with the 53 enemies. Just trying to figure out where we hit the most. I think we're at the perfect spot, to be honest. Okay. Russ is going to town. Nice little death from above. Free reload. Here we go. Well, this almost feels like fighting the loss, but it's not the lost real enemies. But I should not be too cocky because uh, they will get their turn and with enough enemies uh, you can still make a dent because they deal some damage. However, I think it uh, is without question whether or not we're going to win this mission. It's more a question of on uh, which terms are we going to mi win the mission. Death from above and our beautiful autoloader. A very valuable combination. Bastard, our newcomer, also goes into cover. Okay, well, that could be a kill. Inappropriate Murphy deploys the second turret. Easy to hit. Sets this guy up nicely. It's a bit disorienting uh, if they use the same lines as XCOM is using. Okay, well, apparently can't kill them right away. Might as well use the turret in order to finish him. Oh wow. Well. well, implacable into full cover right next to that bandit so that Bladestorm is going to teach him a lesson. <laughs> we could give Flying Enders another chance. Or, alternatively, Oh yeah, well, wait, we could still kill that one bandit over here. What the F? Okay, whatever. Our only light injury was... from a friendly fire situation. Well done. Implacable moves up and is, as he stated so accurately himself, going in for the kill. Might trigger a few more. Nope. Well, yes. Look at that, there are still some elders back there, great. 
Haven't really gotten a chance yet to deal with them. And what I would say is we're just going to kill. And use... Oh, we got Implacable and Hair Trigger. Implacable to move to here. And let's just try to hit him once. Alright, that's good. That's very good. Holy moly. That's a low chance uh, to actually pull that one off. Good. We are healing Vendieu. Just topping him off for good measure. And I'll fast forward their turn. There isn't much happening. Good. So let's kind of recap what has happened. Typically I don't fast forward enemy turns, but I felt the entirety was not worth uh, watching five minutes through because it really took some time for them to get their act together. Essentially, everybody took shots. Uh, Roby um, used his impl uh, implacable, um, his untouchable. We killed two of them charging in uh, with Bladestorm, which was great. Roby absorbed two shots. Uh, we had untouchable on implacable, which is a fun way of uh, saying that. And that also helped us. Other than that, really, we only got a bit of an overwatch uh, going here. And one of their marksmen has grappled over. But that's pretty much it. Overall, a successful turn, I would say. Trying to free up some more, uh, uh, some more shots. Very soon we're going to engage with the Elders. Good, so I should have maybe waited a bit. Uh, anyway, so... We don't have face-off with Endors ready, but we do have it ready with... Dieu. Oh, look at that. Uh, both of them actually fell down. Would you, uh, would you have guessed, right? So this might trigger one or two overwatches. But in the grand scheme of things, should be doing just what we wanted it to. Alright, more enemies triggered. Didn't even trigger an overwatch shot to begin with. Thankfully, we do a face-off. And another demonstration of the superiority of endgame skills is happening. Nice. Nice. With the plasma upgrades and the pistol upgrade, these pistols are really starting to hurt. Imagine if I put another uh, form of ammunition in for two extra points of damage. Holy shit, that was good. Russ moves up, free reload, kills the guy, gets an implacable, and death from above. Moves to here. <laughs> 
This is almost like shooting fish in a barrel. I still find it amusing. The bandits always had been the weakest uh, faction. I don't want to smack talk them, but a suggestion for making them a little bit more serviceable for the future would be hit point pools need to definitely grow with uh, an increase force level and by grow i mean like substantially grow second suggestion would be we need more special abilities yes i get it they are bandits they are not like super hardcore trained elite soldiers but maybe you could uh, give them shredder a couple of passive abilities really because elsewise they feel slightly bland in a sense that all they are doing is um yeah shooting really Shredder, I guess, wouldn't solve that either, and you don't want to go into the Marauder, uh, into the Marauder thing. But you know what? Maybe bandits could be the master of grenades, and you just give them all different forms of grenades, and um, Salvo as a special ability so that they can even uh, throw two grenades. You need to, of course, tune it correctly that in an end game scenario they are not always getting cover removal grenade, and then uh, they plaster you with uh, too many grenades so maybe use the ai in a way that they only throw one grenade and shoot once per turn but overall it could be an interesting feature long Dieu needs to move away starts to burn starts to hunker down cool now what we will do though is Enders here, my good friend Enders. We'll have a f f very fresh overwatch. If, if you say so. And we might trigger additional forces. Yet, okay, cool. Implacable moves up. I think it's really just the Dark Elders at this point. Good, everybody's overwatching. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, the Dark Elders are not the same faction so they wouldn't react to the gunfire that they heard elsewise this would be super simple they would already have started to move in we already know that they are there So no point in uh, just waiting. There we go. That's the nice Overwatch. Do they have lightning reflexes? No, they don't. One of them immediately went down. Yeah, and I think overall that was a really good, uh, solid round. Okay, we're missing. Should have just taken the shot. Alright, moving up to over here Got it with Roby. T 
Team working. There we go. And this should be a kill. Unless, of course, we are not critting. That would have been, by the way, an easy setup. Doesn't matter now. That would have been a very easy setup for a kill. Alright, one down. Quite a few enemies to go. Let's use our turrets. Starting to remove the cover. Every shot, even if it misses, can remove its cover. Fortunately, the hit chance of the turrets is really not so hot, but even if you shoot six times with 20%, on average you hit once, or in this case twice. Not fantastic loot either, but okay. Wilson misses. And over Nate protocol. For threat assessment. One advanced teamwork. Uh, Zirkim is just going to overwatch, really. Enders moves up into a better position. Giving out another 8 protocol. Too many units. Scanning. Overwatch. Together we are strong. One nice advanced teamwork. Moving on and hopefully killing that Scorch. There we go. Is it clear? And that Dark Elder Rack uh, will be the next enemy that needs to die. We got Untouchable on Implacable. Two hits, played Storm on top of it. A guy is at seven hit points without even having started his journey. And apparently they can't attack when they are when they are disoriented, which I feel sorry for him. Who knows, maybe he has attacked and has just missed. Yeah, not really a challenge. Despite 63 enemies, power and numbers works to a degree, but endgame abilities like Face Off, Death From Above with uh, enough shots, Serial, um, you, could, uh, you could even use Reaper as an example. All of them uh, simply counter uh, these power and number strategies because you typically have so much kill potential in your team that even with half of the people that we would have had available, this uh, here would have been a walk in the park. So I don't know how to change that without like going into the mods. And I think the designer of the mods uh, or 
kind of more doing the final mission um, out of uh, the out of a thematic approach. Um, if they really did it just for a challenge, then I think it's a bit naive to assume that just because you put, I don't know, 30 enemies in there that it would uh, work. Of course, it's a bit escalated because we do have uh, double enemy squad size, uh, which just makes the 30 into 50 or 25 into uh, 50. So, or in this case, even 60, uh, 64 enemies. So my one criticism would be as much as I like the mod, um, over all these additional factions, I think you need to be very careful in considering um, what you're doing. At the beginning of the game, it is more difficult. At the end or towards the end of the game, it's actually not that difficult anymore. Got another, another face-off. And Bastard did really well for his uh, first mission we got two exosuits and two spider suits that's cute some intel i mean this is really nice but again for end game uh, options it is good like those uh, bandits as a mid game uh, faction certainly something uh, that i could have done in order to uh, in in order to kill them But yeah, in the end game, not worth it. So we wanted the resistance order. This here, by the way, I think the raiders are already dead. So it's potentially just a mistake. And for me, it seems like you're only getting one faction that you can find every iteration. And the fact that they don't cross the raiders off. We have killed the raiders fully. We've killed the bandits fully. The only thing we've, I think, found but not yet killed the skirmishers. Maybe we've killed them. I I can't remember. We have the cult of Jiraiya left, and we do have uh, the dark elders left. But I don't have an option to get to them without having the right mission. This here is a nice one as well for really good amount of intel. And here we do have a promotion available. I think we're going to do that with Inquisitor. And he works together with Bastard, trying to get them more promotions. This is nice, I like it. All right, uh, what are we going to do? Avenger plotting new I think we're continuing to scan. We got plenty of intel also out of the operation, so we should be good. Can uh, purchase that improved uh, scope. Icarus armor is done, that's fine as well. Still hard at work on the current research project, Good. Commander. So now we can finally get back to research. Oh, custodian armor, two little Elarium crystals. We got to get more custodian armors. Riftkeeper sounds interesting as well. Hmm. Let's get that Riftkeeper. trying to hit the big tickets and am sort of hoping that that will yield us really strong items. Not sure if that's a good strategy or if I should just try to uh, to explore the lower enemies first. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I think we are ready for the next mission. Is the Prime Team ready? Oh yeah, it is absolutely ready. Well, then I will introduce you to our next goal, which is... 
Operation Iron Star and that will be in the next mission. Only 33 enemies, that's easy. We should uh, go nicely along with that. Rift Keeper Mark II, not so easy, but the rest uh, seems straightforward. If um, you enjoy not so easy missions, uh, then this is the right uh, run for you. Shotgun uh, to the face onto the like button, please, and give it a critical click. Thank you. Have a good one and see you in two days. Bye bye.